Welcome back to Invest Africa. After decades of substantial but sometimes difficult progress, Ghana recognizes that it still faces important challenges in its developmental trajectory. The World Bank, among other institutions, aims to assist Ghana in order to sustain economic growth, reach the Millennium Development Goals, and move forward in its efforts to attain middle income status. Ghana's commercial oil production is expected to transform the economy and attract an influx of strong foreign direct investment in the future. This has put the country in the fiscal space to start looking at non-concessional sources of financing. And has also prompted African institutions to reaffirm their role in contributing to Africa's growth story. I think what Africa needs um, at the moment, most African countries do not have the long-term domestic savings that would provide long-term low interest funding for infrastructure right. and that's where I think the AGB should, they should focus on. How do you provide um, transportation infrastructure? How do you provide irrigation? How do you provide power? August 2011 saw the Ghanaian parliament approve a 3 billion US dollar loan from the China Development Bank. This marked the largest facility ever secured by Ghana and will be used to finance the infrastructure gap identified in the National Development Strategy. But Ghana's pre-election macroeconomic challenges have raised concerns around the country's growth path. Traditionally, Ghana's track record during election years in terms of macroeconomic management has not been very good. Typically, we see three key themes coming to the fore in election years, and those are fiscal slippage, where the uh, government typically tends to, to miss its targets, with the increase in spending, uh, inflation uh, edging up towards double-digit uh, levels again, came in at 9.4, the, the June number. And we also see persistent currency weakness. The uh, currency is depreciated just under 20% um, for over the, the course of, of 2012. And the widening of the fiscal deficit may add to investor uncertainty and place further pressure on the already weakening currency. Decisive leadership unwavering economic and political reforms and investor confidence are key to unlocking Ghana's economic development. Dimitri Mahanyele, Johannesburg. Still with me in studio, Talibo Ingalo, Portfolio Manager, Stanlib Africa Equity Fund, Grant Hatch, Executive Director, Strategy Practice, Accenture Southern Africa. And joining us for the second half of the show, Alex Darko, MD of Cardo Consulting. Thank you so much for your time again. You. Well, the equity markets, we haven't spoken about the equity markets in Ghana. I assume that the trend is again an illiquid one with very few companies listed. Is that the reality? Yeah, you know, and, and unfortunately, like Ghana, like most countries in Africa, you know, the, the GDP of, if you look at the, the, the country's economy in terms of GDP, is still not representative of what's on the listed market. So, I mean, as a typical example, if you look at the Ghanaian telco space, you know, you've got uh, uh, MTN, you've got Tigo, you've got Airtel, uh, in terms of the, the major sort of air, um, uh, cell phone companies, but none of them are listed. Um, so, so the stock market is not really representative of what's happening in the economy. Um, luckily, at the moment, you've got a dual listing of Tyler well, um, so unfortunately, you know the the growth that that we're seeing in the in the in the, in the economy is not really feeding into the into the market. And I think the biggest issue we have in, in Ghana is the liquidity in, on on the market. So the stock market is unfortunately not very liquid; uh, it's still very tiny, and we still suffer from uh, a situation where a, a lot of the big companies like the Unilevers, uh, Fen Milk, uh, are still held by the parent the offshore parent companies, and most of these companies hold uh, in excess of you know seventy percent in some instances. So you know. Liquidity is still a bit of an issue, and I think the market is still not uh, no, not where it should be. Uh, and I think with a bit more development, I think we could catch up a bit over time. Yeah, Alex, you were listening to the conversation in the first half with regard sure. to infrastructure, and you added you wanted to add your thoughts. Look, I think as as my my, my colleague said, uh, infrastructure is a challenge, but the government has started making uh, inroads into that. I mean, for instance, recently I think especially the rail system, because when you talked about agro business, mm -hmm. it needs the rail network to carry it. And recently, I think GM, uh, General Electric, sorry, has actually invested or intend to invest over a billion US dollars to revive the, the Maribyrn uh, railway system. Uh, and there's this whole lot of other infrastructure projects that have to be in place to, to help the economy. So the road network is usually where the, in the past the emphasis have been, but in telecommunication, but particularly the rail network, if it's revived in the right way, would be an important uh, addition to, 
to support the economic activities. Is of it going to be revived in the right way, the, I, the rail network? I, th I think it, 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 there's been a long time, it, there's been a long conversation around the best way to do it. And I think the, obviously GE took its time to decide on whether and in what way to, to engage, because obviously they're looking for a commercial return. So if they can put the pipeline or the railway network in the places that carry the most traffic, as for instance, you find Burkina Faso is landlocked, and a lot of its uh, imports and exports go through the ports in Ghana. So the railway network, in addition to supporting what goes on in the country, in country, would also be a trans Africa type uh, rail network, and I think that would be a useful uh, way to earn revenue and justify the investment. Grant, let's speak about Ghana in the context of West Africa and how important the country is to that region. But I think it starts with the question Toby raised about liquidity. I think that a lot of companies make the decision to list on a regional stock exchange and, and you know, Lagos is often more attractive. Mm -hmm. So I think the challenge for Ghana is how does it position itself with its you know, larger and sort of more dominant economic neighbour and to try and uh, to the point about Alex raised about getting the rail networks integrated, um, getting the cross-border trading working. I mean, borders are still very difficult to move products through ports. I mean, there's still long delays in the sort of upper port. So, you know, to the extent to which Ghana can work with, with the Nigerian side and actually create a sort of more regional focus around things like agriculture, around manufacturing to move those products. I mean, that's really going to be the, the key to unlocking the whole region rather than Ghana develop on its own and Nigeria developing separately. In fact, Ghana has more to gain by integration with Nigeria because it's a much larger market. I mean, you've got 150 million people versus around 25. So it makes a lot more sense for Ghana to do that. This is a big theme we've been mm. discussing of late. Is that integration happening specifically between Nigeria and Ghana? Look, I think the, I mean, the, the framework that has to, has to help um, liberalize that is the ECOWAS, the economic community of uh, African countries. There are some structures in place, but in terms of you know, making track, track into the specifics, I think that the, the basis are there. Uh, it's a lot of liberalization in the banking sector. A lot of uh, Nigerian banks have, for instance, uh, opened up business in Ghana. And that I think, and the oil flow as a source uh, before the Ga Ghana fund is on oil, Nigeria has been a, a major source of, so that's a political um, engagement and that then supported by the commercials, I think that's going to be the way to go. But it's something that has to be pursued and pushed. Uh, when you're me. looking to invest in companies in Ghana, mm -hmm. what are the highlights and what sectors are your focus? You know, if you look at the market in Ghana, uh, obviously the banking sector, uh, at the moment you've got eight banks listed on the, on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. So the stock exchange at the moment has 34 companies, uh, eight of them are banks. So if you look across, the banks are quite important. Uh, you look at obviously the, uh, some of the, the indigenous banks, like mm -hmm. banks such as UT Financial uh, Services, which now has a, a bank in the arm called UT Bank. Mm -hmm. um, you look at uh, uh, a Standard Chartered Bank. So I think those are some of the names we'd, we'd, be, we'd be looking at. Uh, we're also quite interested in the consumer names. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Guinness is quite interesting in, uh, in on the market in Ghana. Uh, Unilever is quite interesting. I mean, there's also plays. So the to branded the goods environment is a, is a big theme. It's a big theme. I think it also this plays into the you know the you know the, the whole theme. I guess everyone uh, sees the and African talks about consumer. the African consumer is is rising. You know, you look at companies like Fan Milk, uh, which produces ice cream and milk and what have you. And th this this is a fantastic. These are fantastic businesses that are well run. That are you know that are just huge opportunities for mm -hmm. for investors such as ourselves. And Grant, when it comes to advising, consulting in Ghana, what areas are the, the hotspots? Well, I think it's, it's, as Tabo said, a lot of the multinationals are looking at entering Africa, so they look at East and West Africa, and if it's West Africa, they, the decision around do they go to Ghana or Nigeria and centre their operations there? And it tends to vary. I mean, what we've seen is a lot of the German companies tending to favour the sort of Ghana because of the living standards in Accra are seen as better than in Lagos. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the multinationals, you know, that look at PNG, Unilever, have started really focused on Nigeria because it's a much larger consumer market. So it does vary, but, you know, across companies. But I think all of them have in mind the view to actually how do they serve both markets? You know, do they build operations in one country and then SOG the other? But they do tend to view it as a regional focus because that's where the combined market is much larger. A theme we're starting to roll out on Invest Africa is asking the experts what business they would start in country. And that gives us a very good indication of where you would put your money. So, Alex, that's the question <laughs> to you. Okay. $100,000, where would you put it in Ghana? Okay. Or what would you start? I think one of, the, one of the businesses that has already started, but I think I would look to get into, is the whole outsource market. 
you know, I know education is uh, still an issue, but historically, education was made free and compulsory at the point of independence. So there's mm -hmm. a, a high educational culture in the country. And also, there's a whole lot of returning uh, experts who had gone in the past mm -hmm. because of the political environment and economic environment are returning. And there's a high interest. Uh, a couple of years ago, the BBC did a survey and found the number of um, internet cafes in Accra alone was literally in the hundreds. And there's a whole of interest in IT business. So I think the language is English, people speak English. There's high literacy in IT. And therefore, if you have a business, and also the time zone for most of the, the places, either in the US or other, other places. So the outsource support type environment where people are looking for high-end support staff to support their products and services, I think that will be a business that I will invest in. You know the question, what's the answer? Yeah, I, I agree with Alex on the, on the IT part. I think there's yeah. going to be a focus on developing shared services and business yeah. processing around hubs, right. and Accra could compete very effectively for that, as right. Nigeria would. The other area I'd invest in, but I'm going to need a lot more than $100,000 so <laughs> to speak to Stan, <laughs> is investing in the agriculture sector, the That's sort right. of value processing right. part, That's linking right. the primary We're up it now to a million, two million yeah. dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Into right. agri-processing. I think there's think huge opportunities yeah. linking that into the back end of the yeah. consumer goods yeah. supply chains yeah. around primary conversion. Tabo? I think, you know, if, I think if everyone else is asking for a bit more, I think can I get a hundred, 10 million or 100 million, even now. We're going to get it from Stan, look. <laughs> but I think for, for us, I mean, in addition to the, you know, the sectors mentioned, I think the consumer sector is, is one I'd, I'd be keen on. Mm -hmm. uh, and primarily because it's a defensive sector. You know, I think from, from our, our investment philosophy, we, we focus on, on companies that have very solid earnings profile uh, and, and that are defensive and perhaps that can generate quite a lot of cash. So if you look at the, the consumer space, you know, companies that produce milk, you know, the daily staples, you know, whether there's a recession or not, people still need toothpaste, still need uh, a milk, still need, you know, uh, juice and what have you. So I think those are some of the companies we'd look at and uh, some of the companies I'd be quite keen, you know, to put a bit of money in, yeah. A bit of money. You're asking for $10 million. <laughs> That's all we have time for on this edition of Invest Africa. We'll be back again at the same time until next week. From me, Bronwyn Nielsen, and my guests, it's goodbye.